protein is not protein. Liar! Hello and welcome. This is a criticism of the YouTube channel What I've Learned hosted by Joseph Everett. Many of Joseph's videos are about meat and the effect that consuming meat has on individuals and the planet. However, I think he misrepresents a lot of the current science that is out there. So this video is going to take two parts. The first part is going to be debunking one of his more recent videos currently entitled protein is not protein and then the second part will be a more broad criticism of his channel generally. When I first saw this thumbnail and title I thought he was going to be focusing around the idea that uh, meat is a whole source of protein meaning that it has high levels of all of the essential amino acids and in plants typically you just have to combine a couple of uh, different protein sources to get a good level of the essential amino acids. Protein quality comes down to amino acids. We don't just need protein, we need all the nine essential amino acids that that protein source provides and they each have important functions. Credit where credit is due. Alongside his videos, Joseph releases a comprehensive transcript citing all of his information sources. This is really great. So while I was researching this video, I was looking through his transcript, specifically the part where he pulled up a clip from Game Changers. The recent very popular film, The Game Changers, backed by big names like Arnold Schwarzenegger and James Cameron, makes it sound like you can get all the protein and the essential amino acids you need from only plant-based foods without much effort at all. For example, one cup of cooked lentils or a peanut butter sandwich has about as much protein as three ounces of beef or three large eggs. Then Joseph goes on and attempts to debunk this claim. So yeah, technically you get the same grams of crude protein, but let's look a little closer. He pitches two quasi meals up against each other and makes a graphic to represent their amino acid profiles. But even then you're not getting that much methionine relative to all the other amino acids. Now compare this to what you get from just eating three eggs and a four and a half ounce skirt steak. Well, at first glance, you can see that with the plant-based meal, you have to eat 245 more calories to get less essential amino acids. I checked this comparison for myself on my food data, and yes, there are more calories in the plant-based meal. But what Joseph strategically leaves out is the higher fiber and no cholesterol in the plant-based meal when compared to the steak and eggs, which have twice the recommended daily intake of cholesterol for someone with no risk factors of heart disease, and three times the recommended intake for someone with risk factors. Depending on where you look, these recommendations might be different, but either way, Reducing your intake of saturated fat is recommended, and the steak and eggs has over double the saturated fat as the plant-based meal. And you get a better balance of the amino acids from the animal proteins. Oh, shit! Joseph is straight up misrepresenting the numbers here. The amounts per amino acid fade on towards the end, and if you look closely, they don't correlate with the height of the bars. I made my own graphics to show exactly how misleading Joseph's graphic is. As you can see, the balance is actually the same ratio between both meals. Actually, while looking through his transcript and researching this point, I had a bit of a laugh. Here's what happened. So this is his transcript and he has two links. So the first one is my food data. So I clicked on that, opened it up, and it takes me to this website. My food data looks good. And it just had this example recipes section. The top example being firm tofu, rice, and broccoli. I thought that sounded interesting. I'll have a look at that. And wow, okay, so just a really basic meal of one cup of broccoli, one cup of cooked rice, and one cup of firm tofu gets you almost all of your essential amino acids, with the slight exception of methionine and cysteine, which are at 96 and 97% respectively. Damn close, add a handful of walnuts and you're golden. And this is one meal, so it's very easy to get all your essential amino acids from a plant-based diet. Joseph makes a few claims that suggests it's easier to obtain protein from a meat-based diet as opposed to a plant-based diet. For example, did you know that 30 grams of protein from one food could build less muscle than 30 grams of protein from another food? Eating meat, a high quality protein, Corn Flakes cereal has a very poor diet score of 19, but it was surprising to me that even these athletes, who I imagine would be very calculated with their protein, could be missing the recommended protein intake. I really want to emphasize just how wrong this is. So I thought it would be fun to make a meal out of those ingredients that we saw on my food data. So I made this stir fry with just a couple of extra ingredients. I got some carrot and some uh, sweet corn in there. I also swapped the 
rice out for brown rice. It's just a little healthier. And I put some uh, peanut sauce and some spices on the tofu to make it taste good. So this meal right here meets the recommended daily intake for all of the essential amino acids. So this meal, the stir fried rice with no meat, is considered a good quality protein. Isn't that crazy? This is for the entire day. You can get enough protein from vegan sources of protein, but if you're using whole food vegan sources of protein, you are gonna have to eat a ton of them. I mean, it's a slightly bigger meal, but it's not a ton of food. And this is my entire day's worth. Also remember that I added two extra cups of ingredients to this meal, the extra corn and the extra carrot. So this particular meal is two fifths bigger than it needs to be. With the right knowledge and diligence, yes, you can meet your protein requirements on a vegetarian or vegan diet, but you need to make sure to pick the right proteins. Yeah, we'll make sure we get all of them. Last night, my partner and I had a salad for dinner, and that salad on its own also met the recommended daily intake of essential amino acids. So if I had this for lunch and the salad for dinner, then I've doubled the recommended daily intake of essential amino acids for the day. So the recommended daily intake of protein is about 50 grams. Now, Joseph actually suggests research that essentially doubles that amount, recommending uh, 75 to 100 grams. Now, recent research says the old 50 grams of protein a day recommendation was way too low, and that a 62 kilogram or 135 pound person needs at least 75 to 100 grams of high quality protein per day. It's also worth mentioning that the authors of this study are closely affiliated with the animal farming industry, so it's in their own best interest to promote higher consumption of meat. So even if we want to take the higher recommendation, this being one meal and the salad being another meal, then we've still surpassed Joseph's higher threshold of essential amino acids entirely from plants, and I haven't even included breakfast. Breakfast, which apparently humans get most of their protein from cereals. So humanity gets less of its protein supply from all animal source foods combined than it does from cereals. So I can get a protein heavy breakfast from my cereal in the morning and get an abundance of protein. There's one point that Joseph leverages quite a few of his arguments on, this concept of limiting amino acids. Because if you're not getting enough of one amino acid, you can't properly utilize the other amino acids. But now you're still quite low in methionine. In Joseph's transcript, the link took me to a book that read, Lysine is considered a limiting amino acid. If you don't get enough, the absorption of other amino acids is reduced. Fortunately for vegans, in the same passage, the book also says, The richest vegan sources are soya products, which most vegans consume a lot of anyway. Also, further down that same page, it says, Vegetarian and vegan diets provide the same protein quality as meat-based diets. Funny how Joseph left that out of his video. He would do well to properly read his own sources. Well, as mentioned earlier, data from 2015 says 40% of Americans are not getting the minimum recommended amount of protein. <sighs> Sounds ridiculous, because it is. Here's Dr. Michael Greger. Non-vegetarians get way more than they need, and so does everyone else. On average, vegetarians and vegans get 70% more protein than they need every day. Surprising that there's so much fuss about protein in this country when less than 3% of adults don't make the cut. Uh, presumably folks on extreme calorie-restricted diets who just aren't eating enough food, period. But 97% of Americans get enough protein. I had a chat with forage agronomist and animal nutritionist Dr. Peter Ballersted, who has been a key voice on this protein quality topic. Who? Animal nutritionist. Look, I'm not one to disregard someone's opinion based on a lack of exquisitely relevant qualifications, but before we listen to what Dr. Peter Ballasted has to say, let's listen to what some medical doctors for humans have to say. Here's Dr. Neil Barnard and Dr. Michael Clapper. You just can't get enough protein in your diet without meat. True or false? You know, it's a funny thing. Um, back in the 1950s, dietitians looked at it and it became very, very clear that there's abundant protein in plant products, but that question just will not die. <laughs> it, it is a myth. The idea that a vegan diet is going to be low in protein, complete myth. They are curious to know if uh, plant protein is really as good as animal protein. Uh, short answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, 
All plant proteins are complete. You can't make a kernel of corn or a soybean without using all nine amino acids. So the idea of plant protein being incomplete uh, simply is not scientifically valid. Plant protein, I think, is not only uh, as good as animal protein, but actually far superior. But let's hear what Dr. Peter Ballasted has to say. Something like 59% of children globally don't eat, aren't given eggs, seafood, dairy, meat. And the, the WHO says the best foods for them are the meat, eggs, dairy, seafood. Now they say it in a footnote. They, in the text, they say high quality, right? Or nutrient dense or something like that. They, but down in the footnote, they specify. This point is misleading at best. We need to define what good or the best means in this context. If our goal is only to get high levels of protein, then sure, maybe meat protein is the best source of protein. But if our goal is to eat a balanced, well-rounded diet and, well, eat healthily, which is what the goal should be, then meat is not the best source of protein. And I'll explain why. Isn't it strange to quote a footnote for a meat protein being the best source of protein? Well, here's something that the World Health Organization didn't leave to a footnote to announce. In 2015, the World Health Organization announced that processed meat was classified as carcinogenic to humans and classified the consumption of red meat as probably carcinogenic to humans. When I first watched Joseph's video, I thought, well, no, I hoped that he hadn't seen this announcement from the World Health Organization and that he was just accidentally promoting a source of protein that was dangerous in other ways. But sadly, I watched some of his other videos and realized he has seen this announcement. Breaking news linking meat and cancer. The World Health Organization publishing a report on the dangers of processed and red meats. The WHO's IARC report identified heme iron as one of the suspect compounds in meat. Heme iron is said to increase your risk for heart disease and even cancer, particularly colon cancer. Mick the Vegan has done a good response video for that. You can find the link for that in the description. Now to preemptively clear up a potential rebuttal to my criticisms of Joseph, and that is that he doesn't actually explicitly recommend eating meat. Maybe his interests are just purely academic. Well, I went back and looked at his older videos and he clearly has a pro-meat agenda. Back in the day, in 1946, we were right to like meat. It was the fun way to get our proteins. A dubious proposition at best. And people knew meat was good, but thanks to the American Meat Institute, they learned that it was this good. They are good, aren't they? And they're not. Yeah. Let's let the meat industry tell us how good meat is for us. Mm, actually, no. I think I'll listen to unbiased sources of information. It's clear that Joseph is pro meat eating, which brings me to my final and main criticism of his channel that applies more broadly. Joseph seems to have a complete disregard for the ethical consequences of his actions. By encouraging the consumption of meat, he's tacitly encouraging the mass slaughter of innocent animals in a brutal fashion. Even if you have no sympathy for the plight of animals, Joseph is still misrepresenting the current consensus on dietary health, misleading people into making poor dietary choices, jeopardizing their own health. I find this behavior indefensible and abhorrent. The What I've Learned channel currently has almost 2 million subscribers, meaning Joseph has a very real ability to influence and he owes it to his subscribers to be responsible with that influence. I think I'd like to see Joseph make a video on how he reconciles his morality with his actions. It would be interesting to see if he actually has a complete disregard for others, including animals, or if he deceives himself on this matter as well. Perhaps he's a hedonist, only seeking out the next pleasure. So in conclusion, Obtaining more than enough indispensable amino acids is easily doable on a vegan diet. Obtaining meat from animal sources comes with higher risk of cancer and all-cause mortality. Joseph Everett from the YouTube channel What I've Learned has a propensity to misrepresent data in order to promote a false conception of animal-derived foods. He has a complete disregard for the consequences of his own actions that he also promotes and sometimes tenuously defends. I consider this to be disgraceful behavior that justifies civil criticism, hence why I'm making this video. I don't know why Joseph is doing this other than the suspicion that he doesn't like hearing bad news about his bad habits so he's making up good news about his bad habits. Unfortunately for him, it doesn't matter how much he lies to himself, those lies will never become truths. People love to hear good news about their bad habits, and this is what Joseph is giving many meat eaters. 
please seriously consider going vegan. Whatever reason you find compelling, it's a good one.